Hi everyone and welcome back to the London Watch Collector channel. So as promised, this is the unboxing of the latest addition to my collection. It's the Cosmograph Daytona ceramic bezel released back in 2016. And if you guys have been following me or subscribed to my channel for a while, you'd know that this is my second Daytona. My first one was back in February 2017, approximately six to seven months after the release in Basel 2016 and when I was abroad in the last month or so I was able to get my hands on another one so I gave it to my brother and be able to share with you guys the full unboxing including the sticker removal if you've just tuned in to my YouTube channel just a brief summary on the channel I'm a watch collector a watch enthusiast I've been into watches for many many years I've been through a journey in the last couple of years trying to get my hands on the best and the most sought after watches and I was able to build a collection that I would say I'm very happy with. Next week I'll be reviewing the full collection and share with you why I got rid of some pieces, why I added others and just showing you my complete collection. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and start this unboxing. So I was able to get a lot of accessories throughout the years, some of which I was giving away on my channel. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel, follow me on Instagram. We all know the Rolex service pouch. This is the pouch that comes with your Rolex after the service. It's very, very handy. It's not the best shockproof. It will be nicely tucked in your luggage if you're traveling at the airport or putting it in your, let's say, hand luggage. This is the case that comes with the watch when it's delivered from Switzerland. And then you have some Rolex gloves which always comes in handy while handling your watch, polishing it. These are the ones they use at the ADs or boutiques. And another good accessory was a pen, a Rolex green pen. I think it goes amazing with the Rolex Submariner Date, AKA the Hulk, because of the green it has. So it has the Rolex symbol at the top and it says Rolex there and you just unscrew it and of course before we start the unboxing just to give you a slight little idea so the number you see at the top is the reference so 116500LN that's the reference of the Daytona and it says Oyster S so S being for the smallest box the SAP that's just a supply number for the boxes I guess the number is 78590 that would be the reference for your bracelet and then white index means the color of the dial where my finger is would be your reference number another interesting thing I got from the AD was this magazine uh, 60 pages magazine that was released with the watch back in 2016 Basel to be exact and to be honest it has lots and lots of information. I'll make a special review where I'll share with you all the information I have in this magazine. But it tells you basically everything you need to know about the watch. The history of the Daytona, the different reference numbers and everything you need to know. So I'll make sure to cover a full review where I'll share with you the information available in this magazine. So you can see from the first ever Daytona in 1963, the 116520 in 2000, and then finally the ceramic bezel in 2016. So I won't bore you with this now, but I'll make sure to make an in-depth review where I'll share with you all the information you need to know about this watch. So let's start with this review. So of course the usual Rolex box, and the usual booklet, which says Oyster Perpetual Cosmograph Daytona. It tells you how to set the watch, which is quite a simple one because it doesn't have any complication, no date. And there you go, guys. So before I remove the bezel protector and show you the watch in depth. I'll cover the usual. Some might find it boring, but I feel it's quite important. So that's the tag. The tag would always have your reference number. At the bottom, it will have your serial number. 
and of course the Rolex green tag or green seal which certifies it's a superlative chronometer certified by COSC and the Rolex in-house certification and of course my links which I removed too and then the bezel protector and at the back you would have your catalog at the front you have your guarantee manual worldwide service at the back of it you'll have your reference number serial number and finally guys the watch So let's go ahead and start removing the stickers. As always, I like to start around the case. There's no better feeling than removing the stickers yourself. I know nowadays it's quite difficult to get a Rolex with the sticker still on, especially in the UK. It's obviously because of the grey market and people selling them etc. The one I just removed is an important one. Some people actually keep it because of where the clasp opens, it keeps hitting on the on the link, on the polished center links, creating some scratches over time. So guys, all the stickers have been removed and you can see that the polycenter links matches the watch perfectly 
and the contrast of the white and black along the ceramic bezel and the dial just goes perfectly with this watch. So it has a safety clasp with an easy link. So to adjust it, you just put it in position and then click it in. And if we zoom into the dial, you can see that the platinum writing is just fantastic. They use a PVD coating. To start your chronograph, you just unscrew the pushers all the way out. And then you just use the top one to start. And then the same top one to stop then to reset the bottom and of course always make sure it's completely screwed in to give you the 100 meter water resistance to adjust the watch you just pull out the crown so in the first position you wind it then you pull it out clockwise to go ahead anti-clockwise to go back Let's set it to 1010. That looks the best on all watches. And then to put it back in, you just slightly push and screw clockwise. So a bit of more information on this watch while we enjoy the chronograph ticking away. First things, the reference I mentioned in the beginning, it's a 116500LN and it has a case of 40 millimeter and it's a 904L stainless steel. It's a complete steel watch, including the case, bracelet. The bezel is a black monoblock ceracrome bezel in ceramic with engraved tachymeter scale, as you can see. It has a triple lock winding crown, giving the best waterproofness. The crystal you see is scratch resistant sapphire crystal, unfortunately without the anti-reflective coating, which I hope Rolex would change in the near future. The movement is a perpetual mechanical chronograph self-winding. The caliber is a famous 4130 since year 2000 when Rolex started doing their own in-house movement. So if you have a watch winder, I would set it to around 650 and 900 bi-directional. It has a precision of plus two, minus two seconds per day. The chronograph has an accuracy of one eighth of a second. It has a 30 minute counter at the three o'clock. And you can see every time we finish a minute on the chronograph hand, it will jump a minute. And then you have a 12 hour counter at the nine o'clock. So every time you finish an hour, it will advance by one hour. And finally, you have your seconds hand, which is for the actual watch, positioned at six o'clock. The power reserve is approximately 72 hours. The bracelet you see is a three-piece link bracelet, which is polished in the center and then brushed on the side. We call it as PCL, polished center links. The clasp is a folding oyster lock safety clasp with an easy link five millimeter comfort extension link and of course the dial is white and finally the certification is a COSC COSC as well as Rolex certification after the casing and of course no review is complete without a wrist shot and there you go guys I would say this is one of my favorite watches. If I had to choose from my full collection, which I'll be revealing next week, this would be one of the top three. I just love the contrast, the way the white and black blend together, the way the ceramic bezel matches the watch perfectly, I find fascinating. So guys, that's all for this week. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, and stay tuned for next week where I'll be revealing the full watch collection, telling you about my current state of the collection and why I added the watches I did, why I got rid of watches that I had in the collection, etc. That's all for this week. Thank you for watching. <laughs>